welcome to our Bio 201 brain and eyeball dissection. This is our quick version to remind you of what you've already done in class or if you've missed class for some reason. It's easier to see sometimes than when you're looking at pictures on the histology slides. And these are our players, lefty and righty. <laughs> they will be taking you through everything you need to know today with our sheep brain and then our cow eyeball. So starting with our sheep brain, we have a whole brain here. This is the superior view. These are two different sheep. One's larger than the other. And you might think these are pretty small brains. They're not baby sheep, sheeplings, sheepettes, whatever you call those. Uh, you know, I too was surprised when I first saw a sheep brain. I thought, you know, they have all that time in the meadow grazing to contemplate. They'd have really big brains, but it turns out they're pretty small. They're not that bright. So we have a smushed flatter version here. Uh, but this one shows a little bit better detail, the superior view. You've got all the, the gyri. Remember, a gyrus is singular, gyri or plural, and all these ridges are going to be gyri. So all across the cerebrum. Down the center here is the longitudinal fissure. That's going to divide the left and the right hemispheres. So that was the longitudinal fissure. The central sulcus is kind of hard to see on the sheep's brain. It's hard to see on the human brain as well, um, but it's going to divide the frontal lobes from the parietal lobes. So if we look at the different lobes up here in front, the left and the right frontal lobe, on the sides, the left and the right parietal lobes, and then in the back, the left and right occipital lobes. On the lateral sides, we've got the temporal lobes, left and right. Okay, the other thing that you can see here is this, what some people call a small brain. That's the cerebellum. And then going across, connecting the two hemispheres of the cerebellum are these worm-like structures, little spaghetti worms. Uh, those are the vermis, V-E-R-M-I-S, vermis. So the worms that connect the cerebellum. Okay, so that was the superior side superior view of the brain. Now we're going to look inferior side. This is the underside of the brain. And you can see the brain stem pretty well down here. It starts off with the spinal cord. And then when we get up to this first bump area right here, that's going to be the medulla oblongata. So we transition from the spinal cord to the medulla in this first poofing out. The second set of bumps right here is going to be the pons. Okay, so those are the the two ventral parts of the brainstem, and then we've got the cerebellum right behind it. Then, as you work your way up, we're going to be able to see some different things. Uh, let me switch brains. This one has a really good set of olfactory bulbs. These um, structures up here. It's large flat right now, but they are bulbs. Uh, those are going to be in connection with the cerebral um, frontal lobe. That's going to have a connection with the olfactory nerves coming up through the skull bone, synapsing right there into the olfactory bulbs. And then there will be a, a tract running down uh, that continues the information inside the cerebral hemispheres. But these bulbs are going to be what we'll consider for labeling purposes, the olfactory nerve or cranial nerve one. Okay, and then we have the remains of the optic nerves. They've been cut away. These are where the optic nerves would have been coming out. So an optic nerve coming out this way and this way going to the eyes. But now we just have this very last cut of where the optic nerves are. So this X right here is going to be the optic chiasm. When it's, when it's coming out from the eyeball to the chiasm, it's the, olf, the optic nerve. When it's leaving the chiasm, it's called the optic tract. And then this X is actually the chiasm. Okay, so that was the optic nerve. That's cranial nerve two. Remember, cranial nerve one, cranial nerve two. I'm gonna go ahead and switch brains again. Here's that optic chiasm. And it's a good landmark because 
directly behind it, posterior to that chiasm, this hole that I've made is showing where the infundibulum or the stock that holds the pituitary gland comes out. And if I were to hold my brain as such, that would be the stock and the pituitary gland would just hang directly down that way. Okay, so these right here behind the infundibulum hole, and that just gets cut off when they prepare the brains. Uh, these bumps directly behind are gonna be the mammillary bodies. And let me see if the other brain has a better view. So these mammillary bodies, it's kind of hard to see right here, but uh, after we cut into the brain, let me go ahead and show you what it would look like. This little round piece right here is the mammillary body. And that would be um, the posterior border of where the hypothalamus is. Okay, and we're back on the superior side of the brain. Just want to show you what happens when we kind of pull back and separate the cerebellum. That's not a natural thing. You actually have to do that on purpose. If you look inside here, we have four bumps that you can see right here. This is part of the mesencephalon, the middle brain, midbrain. These are the superior colliculi and below it would be the inferior colliculi. So two pairs of colliculi together, those four bumps make up the corpora quadrigemina. And that's one of the main portions of the midbrain or mesencephalon. It's on the posterior side. You, know, you actually have to pull back the cerebellum. If we look on the inferior side, the, the part of the midbrain that you can see would actually be the cerebral peduncles, the footpaths that lead from the pons and medulla oblongata, all of that fiber connection up to the upper portions of the brain. Okay, and on the inferior side, the midbrain mesencephalon, just above the pons, you've got these cerebral peduncles. That would be the footpaths that lead from the medulla and pons up to the upper portions of the brain. Um, it's hard to, to see them the way that you would in a picture, but it's just these regions just above the pons in the middle, corresponding with those colliculi in the back. Okay, when we are ready to make our mid-sagittal cut down the center, here we have this brain that uh, is already starting to separate at the cerebral hemispheres. And there's a little bit of membranous material here that's gonna be the arachnoid mater and pia mater maybe uh, that's left over from those meningeal layers that are still close to the brain. The dura mater is no longer on this brain. It would be like a swimming cap over the top here, very hard and durable, but we've already had that removed. So if I just tease those layers apart, those membranous layers, you can tell that there is no real connection between the cerebral hemispheres, the right and the left sides, until you get to the corpus callosum down in the middle. And that's where we'll have to cut through. Okay, I'm ready to make a cut with the scalpel here. Uh, be careful if you're ever doing this, not to cut off your fingers and hold it like I'm holding it. You probably wanna have it down in the tray, but I just wanna show you, you're only cutting right in the center here and it's really gentle cuts that you can make. It doesn't take a lot to get it to separate. I'm going to put it down here and see if I can just work down the center. You want to be as exact as possible so you can get a good view of the structures right in the center. I'm going to turn it over. get everything a little bit of a hack job here but we've got two halves now okay we've got two good halves here I'm gonna put one down for a moment so we can see a really good landmark in the middle here this is the corpus callosum this little arch that comes up here and this loop 
if we follow it like a circle, the inferior portion is the fornix down here, but this top is the corpus callosum, those fibers that connect the two cerebral hemispheres. And this membrane right here, this very thin membrane that's covering this hole is actually the partition between the two lateral ventricles, the left and the right lateral ventricle. It's the septum pellucidum, and there's little holes in there, the interventricular foramen that actually allow the fluid, the cerebral spinal fluid in the ventricles to pass through. I'm going to kind of tear through it so you can see how thin it is. This is the little membrane. And then when we open it up, if we look at the other half of our brain over here, we've got the same bit, but no partition. I've cut it all to the other side. So here's the corpus callosum, and then here's the chamber, the opening, that's the lateral ventricle. If I just kind of pull that apart, you have a really good clear view into this ventricle. That pigmented area, this dark tissue right here, that is part of the choroid plexus. Those are the specialized ependymal cells that produce the cerebral spinal fluid. So you're going to find those in certain areas of the ventricles. And this is a really good example.